So what happens is, our life is a reservoir. Our life as a reservoir is about receiving, but it's about receiving again to the full, to be absolutely, actually the word receive, I think it's like paleo or something like that, means to be crammed. It means to be utterly packed. It means, it means shaken down and pressed together. And, and, and so when you're filled with the Spirit, it's not like this little ball of light comes in and goes, oh. Now my heart is happy. Now my heart is happy. I'm, I've been filled, you know, and but now I have to get it into the rest of my body, into the rest of this evil, you know, thing. Some people think only your spirit's safe, which is absolutely goofy. Even in the Old Testament, David would say, my soul magnifies the Lord. My soul longs after the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh long for the living God. It's like... Dude, if his flesh was sanctified back then, I think yours ought to be better than that. <laughs> but anyway, you are to be filled in such a way where you're saturated, where every fiber of your being resonates with the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Amen. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus is a, is a higher law than gravity. Amen. The gravity that holds you to the ground right now while this earth is spinning. The law of gravity is not as strong as the law of the spirit of life in Christ Amen. Jesus. And every fiber of your being is made to resonate with the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. That's what it means to be filled with the spirit. And this spirit that has filled you is the very divine nature of God. Like was quoted this morning from the book of Colossians chapter 2. I think he quoted it. So it's such a wonderful verse that... The fullness of God, the fullness of the Godhead was in the person of Jesus Christ. And the fullness of Christ is in you. So we're saturated so that we can be marinated, so that we can sink this ship ah, into the pickling solution of the divine nature. So that we come out transformed. Amen. We are the transformers. <laughs> and we come out to live this ascended, resurrected lifestyle. That is the reservoir piece. But it's interesting. I noticed something in ministries uh, several years ago. And that is, oftentimes I'd have prayer lines of a few hundred people. And some of you know I kind of have a reputation as being the energizer bunny. Like, uh -huh. I can pray for hundreds and thousands of people. I'm serious. And it doesn't wear me out. But wow. just like... And I'm going to tell you the secret of that today. The secret is not the flow. The secret is the overflow. Whoa. And I'm going to tell you how to step from the reservoir measure to the river measure. That causes the overflow. Alright? And I learned this just by need. By absolute need. Because you know what used to happen? I'd, I'd have a line of people to pray for and the first one, whoo, oh, they'd be touched. Something wonderful happened. Second one, whoo, they're touched. Third one, whoo, they're touched. Fourth one, yeah, kind of, you know. Uh, fifth one, mm, not so much. Sixth one, nothing at all. Seventh one, now I'm getting depressed. Not only are people not getting blessed, but I'm getting depressed. And this would happen over and over again. Where some people would be touched, but not everybody would get something. That was really frustrating to me, and I couldn't figure out what was going on. And you know what I figured out? I was giving out of my reservoir rather than out of the river. Um, flowing river, eh? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to explain that more. But see, I was giving out of what I have. And that's not wrong or bad. You could do that. Such as I have, give I unto you in the name of Jesus Christ, stand and walk. And, and we've, we've done that before. And, and there, again, there's nothing wrong with giving out of your reservoir because it's the same thing as what's in the river. But the difference is it's the measure that I've received. See, there's a measure of your gift, there's a measure of your faith, and there's a measure of your sphere of influence uh, that is all spoken of in the Bible. And all three of those measures will affect the activity of the Holy Spirit surrounding your life. How big is your gift, how big is your faith, and how big is its sphere of influence that God has assigned to you. And so, um, uh, 
at any time, I can pray for anybody anywhere, and I can pray out of my reservoir. But you notice that, remember the woman with the issue of blood? She came up to Jesus, and, and there's a whole crowd surrounding him. She touches him, and Jesus goes, who touched me? Who touched me? Right? Well, and why did they ask, who touched me? Why did Jesus ask, who touched me? Because his disciples go, Jesus, everybody's touching you. You know, so it wasn't like she was the only one who actually got to him. But her touch made a withdrawal on his anointing. Wow. In other words, he felt something come out of his personal reservoir. Amen. Wow. He actually felt something come out of his personal reservoir. You can actually tell when you've given out of your reservoir rather than out of the river. You, can, you actually feel a depletion in the grace, a depletion in the, gra in the anointing. You, it, it's not that, that you have less, but you, just, you can tell that virtue has gone out of you. And, and, and that's what was happening in those prayer lines. Is I was giving what I had, and so I had. I was pretty happy that I had three to five people's worth. <laughs> that was pretty good for me. Wow. It wasn't so good for the hundreds of people that were lined up with the need. Wow. You know what I'm saying? This is what I learned. If I will keep receiving while I'm giving. If I'll keep receiving while I'm giving. If I will think of myself. Now listen, I want you to understand. I am both a battery and an extension cord. The battery is my capacity to hold the power of God, the anointing of God, the gifts of God. I, I am a battery and I do carry that around in me all the time. That's part of my reservoir nature. But I am also an extension cord that can plug into heaven with an endless supply on this end and deliver unending power and never run out because I'm not tapping in to my reservoir I'm tapping into the overflow of the river where there's an unending supply and this is actually a conscious act this is actually a conscious act see a lot of times you don't know at first when you're just giving out of what you have and out of your reservoir. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong because you are a battery. And the same thing that's in your battery is the same thing that's in the extension cord. It's okay. The only thing is your battery's going to need to be recharged. But the extension cord only needs to be plugged in. And, and, and so you actually begin to discern when you... When the plug has come out, like have you ever been out, you got one of those plug-in weed whippers or, you know, something like that, or ladies, you're vacuuming the carpet and all of a sudden the plug goes out, the power dies, and you just walk back and plug it back in, right? Well, you know what, it's the same way as you are learning how to flow out of the overflow of the river rather than out of the flow of your reservoir, where you actually sense, whoa, okay, there seems to be a slight depletion in power here. So what do I do? I step back into my spirit. I step back into my connection with the Holy Ghost. I step back into receiving mode. And you know what? You'll see me do this from time to time when I'm praying for hundreds of people. It's just pray, pray, pray. And then I'll just take a minute and I'll laugh and I'll <laughs> chuckle and I'll drink and I'll, you know, soak a little bit and... And, and some of the people think I'm trying to think something up. No, I'm not. I'm not rolling my own in the first place. You know what I mean? So, so I'm not doing that. No, I'm just, I'm just making sure that the connection to heaven, that I'm staying plugged in. Because it's real easy to shift back into your reservoir and out of the river. And when you find yourself running out of grace, when you find yourself running out of gifts, when you find yourself loving out, running out of love or compassion or peace, or any of these things. It's not that it wasn't there all the time. No, it was. But it was in your reservoir. It was in your battery. And you need to get back plugged into that. That's why the scripture tells us that all fruitfulness comes from abiding. All fruitfulness comes from abiding. Abiding in God. Remaining in God. He said, if you remain in me, and my word remains in you, you'll bear much fruit, and nothing will be impossible. Wow. Come on, the impossible realm, the fruitful realm is through the secret of understanding your abiding in Christ and Christ abiding in you. 
So there's like my reservoir part that, and, and what I've learned is my reservoir is for me. My reservoir is for me. That's like my personal supply. That's for my life. That's for my needs. That's for my walk. That's for my journey. And my river is for others. It's so that I can be a conduit between heaven and earth. I can be Jacob's ladder where angels ascend and descend. I can be that gateway into heavenly realms. I am the portal. You are the portal between heaven and earth. And... Uh, where again, angels ascend and descend, where the activity of heaven is made possible here upon the earth. But we have to learn how to abide. We have to learn how to be that conduit in the Holy Spirit. And again, that's why 1 John chapter 2 and verse 20 says, You have an anointing from the Holy One and you know it. Do you? The Bible says you do. And then it says in verse 27, that was verse 20 and verse 27, it says, And that anointing remains in you and it's real not counterfeit and it says because of that you don't have need for anybody to teach you for the holy spirit will teach you all things he will teach you how to abide in him and so here is the secret of your anointing the secret of your gifts the secret of your anointing the secret of your calling see the anointing does not deplete sometimes you feel more anointed than others Sometimes you see better results than others, but the scripture says that the anointing you have remains in you. It never, it doesn't fluctuate. It doesn't go up and down. The anointing remains. It is a constant. Why? Because the gifts and calling of God are irrevocable. All right? So, so that anointing stays the same. So how come there are fluctuations in the power? It's only your sensitivity to the abiding presence of the Lord. That's all it is. It's just your sensitivity, just your awareness of the abiding presence of the Lord. That's why it says, hey, people can't really teach you this thing. I know I'm trying, but, but you're going to have to catch this by the Spirit. Because he said, you don't have need of somebody to teach you about your anointing. Because anointings are so diverse and so complex and so multidimensional. There are diversities in these gifts. So when it says that you don't need somebody to teach you, come on. That is not an opportunity to be rebellious or unteachable because God has established teachers in the, in the body of Christ. They're part of the ministry that God has given for the building up of the saints, for, for the equipping of the ministry, and, and uh, till we all come to the full measure that's in Christ Jesus. We need teachers. So what's he saying? He's saying when it comes to your gifts and your anointing, nobody can really teach you because it's so dimensional. Nobody can teach you fully about what you carry because you have your own gifts and then how those gifts operate, like we might even have the same gifts, Eric, but how they operate in you and how they operate in me can be totally different. Yeah. And I can have an assignment in this area and you have an assignment in this area. And so someone looking at our two gifts might think they're nothing alike, even though we're flowing in the exact same gift. Yeah. And so the Holy Spirit says... You have an anointing from the Holy One and it's real. It's not counterfeit. And it remains in you. And so you have need of no one to teach you because the Holy Spirit's going to teach you all things. Remember, the context is concerning your anointing. That's what you don't have need of someone to teach you how yours works. Why? Because that's the one thing that the Holy Spirit reserves the right to teach you. It's about your own anointing and how to flow in it and what it is. And, and he said, through that, I'm going to teach you how to remain in me, how to stay in the glory, how to stay in the overflow, how to keep plugged in to the things of heaven, how to know how God is speaking through me, when God is speaking through me, how God is moving Amen. through me. Yo, this is part of the ascended lifestyle that ascending, comes on Amen. the other side of the finished work of the cross. Oh, so what are some of the things you should overflow in according to Scripture? Amen. Romans chapter 15, verse 13. Oh, this is a sweet one. This is a really good one. Romans chapter 15, verse 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. Oh, 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 oh. 